My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to save you some money. My job is not just to teach, but to educate and to entertain. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. What comes after this horrific moment where nothing works and we are solidly in bear market territory in the indices? <laughs> Dow plunging 876 points today. Still holding up a little bit better than the S&P, which plumbed at 3.88%. And the NASDAQ, which nosedived almost 4.68%. Simple. Sooner or later, something does work. Because, like I tell you every night, there is always a bull market somewhere. We just have to find it. But always doesn't mean every single day. Today, there was truly no bull to be found. With every sector hitting the skids, including the oil stocks, even as crude, the commodity opened down and then reversed to finish higher. Bye, bye, bye. However, it's highly unlikely that the market will stay this negative. Not because things are good. They definitely aren't. Rate shot up so fast today that it was breathtaking. That's terrible. But it will bottom because we will get oversold and because stocks actually get cheaper. The S&P is getting cheaper. And there are plenty of stocks that start looking attractive on day two of a huge sell-off. Look, that's just history, okay? That's just history. I mean, it doesn't feel that way now, but it's the way things have been unless the world's coming apart, and I don't see that happening. I see lots of pressure, but no world coming apart. I think, although, I think definitely, though, a lot of people feel lost here. You may feel lost, which is a natural feeling if you still own the kind of stocks that were working in 2020 and 2021, rather than pivoting to companies that make things and do stuff at a profit, then return those profits to shareholders, all while having a stock that trades at a reasonable price. Those are the stocks that you can sit in. Uh, as for the others, anything that doesn't pass the make stuff, do stuff test is questionable at best. I'm willing to make an exception for a couple of growth stocks that get beaten down at ridiculously cheap levels on a price to earnings basis. Not sales, but earnings. But there aren't that many of those. It's true that this is a rare market with increasingly bad breath, very few winners, which means it's unlikely to bottom on a dime. But there are still stocks that work. They just don't tend to be in the NASDAQ which is now down 33% from its high point, the lowest level since September of 2020, before we found out the COVID vaccine cavalry was on the way. Today, there are only 179 advancing issues in the New York Stock Exchange. That's the lowest since June 11, 2020, when we had just 92 advancing issues. That was when we got the first COVID resurgence, a day where the Dow lost 1,861 points for a 6.9% decline. On a day like today, it certainly feels like nothing can work. Only five stocks, the S&P 500 finished up five. Although that's because we're still trying to factor in that horrendously overheated consumer price index number from last Friday. Not enough selling was done. Maybe the market couldn't contain it. But the good news is everything is for sale. Even if not everything should be on sale. Not everything's impacted by the troika of worries. Russia, Ukraine causing skyrocketing oil and food prices. China's economy in lockdown causing many tech sales to be lost or delayed. And, of course, ramp inflation, which may finally be peaking less when everyone else is freaking out about it. And even if it's not peaking yet, it may well peak if the Fed raises interest rates decisively on Wednesday. That's increasingly likely. Moments like this are why I first came up with my Bristol Myers theorem. I said, what do these negatives have to do with the price turnings multiple Bristol Myers? The answer, not much, except for inflation, and that's going to be dealt with by the Fed. I still believe that. So even though it goes against every instinct, when the market craters like this, you should be thinking not what to sell, but what to buy. Now, we've been high grading the charitable trust portfolio for weeks, buying recession-resistant stocks, and we went back to the well today. We're going to do it again tomorrow. The Dow's filled with interesting stocks, which is why they held up better than the S&P and much better than NASDAQ. I'm looking at those. Hey, speaking of going back to the well, I like the wells. I think there's a place for oil in your portfolio as long as the stock in the question gives you an especially high yield, like Devon or Pioneer. These can be bought, too, because even after interest rates shoot up the, the dividends, the yield from those two stocks are well above treasuries. But why bother to try to pick winners at all? Why not just sell everything and buy them back at a lower level? I've been telling you that because we have an event this Wednesday that will tell us if the Fed's truly serious about fighting inflation. Going to this meeting, Fed Chief Jay Powell has talked endlessly about 50 basis point rate hikes. I have said endlessly that that's not enough. We need a 100 basis point rate hike. After the CPI number we got Friday, 50 basis points ain't going to cut it. 
But the Fed's boxed in because of Powell's comments. If they do a 100 basis point rate hike, they'll look like they're panicking. They can do 75 as a compromise, but that's like, that's like bidding against yourself, as they never even indicated that 100 was in play. How can Powell thread the needle? I think you do this. I'm offering him an opportunity here. He could do the promised 50 basis point rate hike, but double the number of long-term bonds the Fed is selling, which would give the yield curve, the Treasury yield curve, some inflection and help drain the giant wave of liquidity that's still in the system. The fact that the two-year Treasury is at nearly 3.4%, slightly higher yield than the 30-year, tells you that one of those two is wrong. I think the 30-year is too low because too many investors are dumping stocks and swapping into these bonds for safety. You should be doing short rates, not longer but here's where things get tricky. If Powell gives us 50 basis point hike, rate hike, and doesn't double the amount of bonds he's selling, say looking for 200 billion, which is what I want, then he will look weak and our stock market will go even lower. If he hikes by more than the promised 50 basis points, people will panic. They'll say there must be something wrong out there, maybe something in crypto world. If he goes with my plan, a 50 basis point hike, and a doubling of the Fed's bond sales, because he doesn't want to go with my 100 plan, obviously, I think Wall Street would welcome this tougher approach. Now, here's the tricky part. The alternatives are tough to fathom, but fathom we must. I know that I'm itching to buy more of these super high yielders from the oil patch from my travel trust. The current corrections in the oil is a good opportunity. Um, you can buy some of the drug stocks, but if the Fed doesn't take aggressive action, enough aggressive action on Wednesday, the bears will say their dividends simply aren't enough in a world of high inflation and rapidly rising bond yields, and the stocks will go down. Swelling dollar also hurts the food and drug stocks because they tend to have big foreign ex- exchange exposure. As I said earlier, many people are lost because they went all in speculation. Some bet on incredibly expensive tech stocks, the ones that traded at high prices, sales multiples, forget earnings. These people might be blown out forever especially if they bought those stocks with borrowed money. Some bet on cryptocurrency. After listening to the sirens, who said Bitcoin was a good hedge against inflation. <laughs> that didn't happen. They're hoping to be bailed out by the usual noisy Bitcoin rainmakers that will be squawking all day tomorrow. But after meeting with tons of Silicon Valley executives last week, nearly all of them told me that crypto is a con and NFTs are as worthless as tulips. More on that later. If you ask me what's most daunting here, is that we've got so many younger investors who've never seen a market like this one, including many of the 22 million people with Robinhood accounts. See that stock? Lots of people who trade through Robinhood buy call options. Those are turbocharged bets as some stocks will go higher. So I bet many of those call buyers are already wiped out. Lots of people want Bitcoin, maybe a lot on margin. They're most likely obliterated. But the bottom line, if you took your cue from me, and bought common stocks of companies that make real things and do real things that return capital and trade at a reasonable valuation, you're relatively fine. This is not the time to make a lot of money. This is the time not to lose a lot of money until better times occur. Problem is, those stocks go down less. The ones that work or the ones that are stable, they're really boring. Of course, in a market like this, where everyone, everything's excited, and everything that's interesting and exciting has been eviscerated, well, there's nothing better than boring. Bob in Connecticut. Bob. Hey, Jim. Bob. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a long-term daily listener from the days of Cudlow and Crown. Okay. I'm 75 years old, living right. off dividends, 70% in Apple and Microsoft, but I'm well diversified. Okay. What, sh- what should I be thinking to prepare for this economic hurricane of companies cut? Years ahead, and even if they can't. What do I do? Jack and Marilyn, Jack. What? I, I'm looking at. Okay, Jack. Jack and Marilyn, Jack. Jimmy Chill, how's it going, man? Ah, long day, you know what I mean? I definitely know what you mean. Yeah, I might need to crack a beer after that one. <laughs> yeah, it's, you got that um, right. Yeah, man. Um, so my question here is, uh, so I'm looking to diversify a bit um, and really interested in Disney uh, at these levels. You know, top-notch brands and offerings like Marvel, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Pixar, Disney Parks. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on Disney shares here? All right, well, look, uh, you know, I like Disney for my travel trust. I've been dead wrong, okay, just dead wrong. I've been looking at it as a franchise. I've been looking at it as being a company that is worth a lot more than its stock. Right now, the long knives seem to be out for the CEO. I think he's done a great job at the theme parks. Right now, people have decided that this balance sheet is is really awful, so there's no hope for the company. Right now, I look at it and say, you know what? At $90, my travel trust has to buy more. 
It's just too inexpensive as a company, not on earnings. And they obliterated the darn balance sheet when they bought that stupid Fox. But they can't seem to take the right down. I say at 90 bucks and change, it's a buy, not a sell. But I have been wrong, and I have to accentuate that. Now, in a market like this one, where everything exciting has been destroyed, obliterated, laid to waste, there's nothing better than boring. Remember, it's not the time to make a lot of money. It's just the time not to lose a lot of money. Very hard to make money. On Mad Money Tonight, my trip out to San Francisco offered a stark warning on the state of cryptocurrencies. I'm sharing the red flag and breaking down what I learned. Then trying to figure out why this market is such a buzzkill? I'm using one Spears company as a case study to understand the difficulty of this tape. And Humana helps protect millions of people across the country. But can the stock help protect your portfolio amid a challenging landscape? I'm checking in with the CEO. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.